ladies and gentlemen, please welcome TEA Lifetime Achievement Honoree and Disney legend, Marty Sklar. Good evening. This uh, year marked the 50th anniversary of the 1964-65 New York World's Fair, which was a real showcase of innovative storytelling, and not the least of which were the attractions created by Walt Disney. It's hard to believe that when we began uh, work in Glendale in 1960 for the Disney shows at the fair, we were all of 100 Imagineers that made up the creative design and delivery staff of WED Enterprises, Walt Disney's personal company, by the way. But Walt had access to all the great talents at his studio in Burbank. That enabled Walt Disney to take on three amazing shows, Ford Motor Company's Magic Skyway, GE's Carousel of Progress, and the very first human audio animatronics figure for the state of Illinois. Walt liked to make it simple, so he said, let's do Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> of course, if we screwed that up, who would notice? <laughs> the New York World's Fair not only became the catalyst for a huge expansion of Disneyland, all the shows came home from New York in one form or another, but much more than that, the fair truly changed our whole industry forever. Suddenly, we could handle huge numbers of people with people moving systems on land and water that carried well over 3,000 people per hour. Songs and music became storytelling standards. And Walt Disney World was on its way. The same month the fair opened in 1964, Disney made its first purchase of land in Florida. But at the last minute, literally 11 months before the fair, opened in Fleshy Meadows, New York. Walt must have spotted Orlando Ferrani taking another long lunch hour at Checks Cash or Viva's. <laughs> so he decided we needed more work, and he gave us a present called UNICEF, the United Nations Children's Fund. Now, all they wanted was a show about the children of the world. Walt said, it's a small world was, quote, another kind of magic kingdom, a magic kingdom of all the world's children. Walt understand how music, understood how music could tell his story. He wanted a song that would be unforgettable and capture the show's meaning and spirit, something so catchy that it would immediately, immediately become a part of the listener's psyche. And he got one, either the most loved or the most reviled tune ever written. Let it go, let it go. I won with the wind and sky. No, no, not that one. Not that For one. The first time no. In forever, like some so full, like no, no, not that one either. <laughs> you guys know what I mean. <laughs> and now it's uh, my privilege and pleasure to introduce you to one of the creators of the song that he and his brother Robert wrote for It's a Small World. Please welcome composer and lyric lyricist, the incomparable Richard M. Sherman. <laughs> Oh, thank you, thank you. Oh, please. Oh, my, 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 my. <laughs> Marty. Oh, thank you so much. Please, uh, my, my brother thanks you and I thank you, believe me. Uh, Bob and I were the st staff writers at the studio, and uh, this whole incredible story started with a telephone call. We got a call from Marty, from uh, Walt's secretary. She said, Walt wants you to meet tomorrow afternoon after lunch on stage two at the, stu at the studio, because we were working at the studio. And we said, sure, OK, fine. So Bob and I went down to the sound stage, and there we saw a mock-up of the most interesting thing. It was a, a big 
like a serpentine walkway, and there were some beautifully costumed dolls, automatic dolls up there, and uh, it was just quiet and no lights were on or anything. And Walt had a kind of worried look on his face, but he said, okay, I want you to see something here. Okay, okay, Walt, right, what is it, what is it? He said, well, we'll start here, and we started at this beginning, and he said, turn it on. So on comes the lights, and the, the little dolls enchantingly started singing, and each group of dolls from the various countries was singing a national anthem of the various countries. This is something that on paper works beautifully, but when you... <laughs> That's where it stops. It was a cacophony. It was absolutely a total mess. And so we were walking through this serpentine walkway, which eventually, of course, became boats. And after about 35 minutes of this misery, he says, I'm 35 feet of this. He said, stop, kill it, kill it. And so we stopped. He said, I want you guys to write me a little song. See, it's the small children of the world of the hope of the future. But don't get preachy. Get it simple. And I want to be able to translate it into various countries. And so, yeah, right, Walt. And he said, and by the way, we have to have it right away because we're building this damn thing in, in New York and it's going to be opening soon, so we got to have it. So he said, okay, Walt, uh, yeah, right, why, sure, why? So we went upstairs to our office and uh, wrote a little song, never dreaming, truly, that here 50 years later I'd be talking about this little song that Bob and I wrote. When you write something, you don't write it fast. You don't write it in tempo. You write it slowly and gently. And we wrote it like a prayer for peace. And I'm going to play it the way we first wrote it. Of course, you all know it as a happy jingle. But I'm going to play it with the true meaning, which is let's not kill each other, folks. Let's learn to respect each other and live with each other. That's what the words after all mean. It's a small world after all. Let's not kill each other. Let's love each other. That's what we were trying to say in the song. So I'll sing it for you the way we first wrote it, okay? It's a world of laughter, a world of tears. It's a world of hopes and a world of fears. There's so much that we share that it's time we're aware. It's a small world after all. There is just one moon and one golden sun. And a smile means friendship to everyone. Though the mountains divide and the oceans are wide, it's a small world after all. It's a small world after all. It's a small world after all It's a small world after all It's a small, small world There is just one moon and one golden sun And a smile means friendship to everyone Though the mountains divide and the 